Hi, I'm Dr. Matthew Norton, the founder of People Plus Purpose. Welcome to the Truth Behind Dentistry podcast. And today I am joined by Majid Tabib. Majid is the founder and partner of Viva Concepts. He's been working with dentists in marketing and consulting for 22 years. He is a graduate of UC Berkeley's computer science program, and as a result is an expert in management, workplace compliance, and HIPAA, as well as a frequent lecturer across the U.S. He has founded and developed several multifaceted marketing, consulting, and management-related companies. His most recent project, Viva Concepts, currently has served over 5,000 dentists nationwide after 12 years of operation with its unique approach to practice growth. Welcome to the podcast, Majid. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you for having me. Look forward to having this conversation with you. Yes, absolutely. I've been looking forward to it as well. So uh, since this is the Truth Behind Dentistry podcast, right, we'll be right up front that that's, uh, that's what we're talking about. So I would like to kind of begin by asking what, from your kind of peeking behind the curtain uh, uh, orientation here, what is the largest disconnect that you're, you're noticing in the field of dentistry? Um, very good question. I, I think when you look at any field and you, you try to zero in on where is the most inefficiency that you can locate, isolate, and then uh, address, uh, what I have seen, and I have seen thousands of practices now over the past two decades that I've been working with dentists, uh, is that everybody is so anxious about opening the front door and making sure they have lots of lots of new patients, good quality patients into the practice, that they kind of forget their back door. Hmm. And, and that this seems to be a new pandemic or uh, <laughs> issue where you're not recognizing that as an industry, we are like revol revolving doors in most dental practices as many new patients as we're getting every month, we're losing them back out the back door. And I see this very easily to, to observe when you talk to a dentist and you say, how many days of hygiene you have? And they say four or five. And you ask them, well, how many years have you had these four or five days of hygiene? And they tell me for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, they've been at that level. And I say, well, don't you realize that means you're losing as many patients as you're getting? Otherwise, you should be a two, three, four, five full-time hygienists by now. And that's something that is not very easily uh, sensed for some reason. So do you think that that some of these people thought they, they've moved into buildings that they thought did not have a back door? Somehow they thought <laughs> that there was no other way out and they didn't see them leave out the front door, right? So <laughs> yeah, that is an interesting it is an interesting thing. I I I agree with you that it's 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 the the fever pitch is always for new patients and who doesn't want more to reach more new people for sure. But I, I agree, we're not doing the best we could do with the people that are already in front of us. And and many times that is the problem. It's because they don't see that they have a back door that is wide open, then they feel that urgency or need to continue to uh, promote on the front door because they know or they inadvertently are experiencing the loss uh, and they're seeing the need that, oh, we need more bodies in the shop, we need more bodies in the chairs. And they don't realize that it's because the back door is wide open. So that kind of, to me, begs the next question, which would be, what are we as a profession doing wrong or how are we being subpar in our patient engagement, our patient you know, our customer service, right? right. Uh, so maybe if if you agree that that is kind of where to go next with that, that that issue, let's talk about that a little bit. What are your thoughts about about patient service? Right. Um, it's interesting that as a field, dentistry has some obviously negativity uh connotations. Um, it seems to be, you know, if you if you if you uh, survey a thousand people, usually they come up with the same two items is the cost connected with dentistry and also the pain connected with dentistry. So, you know, I would much rather go to a nice spa and get a massage 
and go to a dentist and get a root canal or, <laughs> or even go to the hygienist and just get a regular cleaning now, right? So there is this, uh, this backdrop to this field as opposed to more entertaining field. <laughs> And and then you couple that with the frequency of engagement, right? Uh, you usually see a dentist a couple of times a year at most. So that uh, frequency doesn't seem to strike a very lasting bond if you're seeing somebody twice a year or three times a year versus another field which you could be seeing that vendor uh, you know, at least once a month or once every two months. And so that frequency engagement uh, yields to a much better customer service, engagement, affinity, rapport, uh, and overall bettering of uh, that bonding between the patient and the office. Yeah, that was, that was funny to me. I just, you made me laugh there in the way that you framed that. But I, I think, yes, there are plenty of other options. When I talk to people sometimes about case acceptance, to clients about case acceptance, uh, and people saying time or money, it's it's almost always, you know, they don't have the money or they don't have the time. And m most of the time, from my perspective, neither of those things are necessarily true. But it is comes back to priorities. I would rather take a trip to Hawaii with my whole family than to then to invest there, which then comes back around for me as to like, do they really get why this is so important or beneficial to them? Are they are they really buying what you're offering to them to the extent of their need and what the benefits are truly going to be or what's going to happen if they don't? But I also think you're right. It's kind of based around something they would prefer not to have to do in the first place. And and there's not enough dating to cement <laughs> to cement a really <laughs> intimate relationship there, so to speak. So, so what what are your thoughts then about answers for that? Where where would you go given those two those two elements you mentioned? What what to be done? Uh, very good question. So, the what we recommend as a company, we say, look, the back door is equally important, if not more important than the front door. You need to make sure that you address the needs of your customers, patients, in terms of what they are looking for as a solution. And a lot of these people are looking for a long-term solution, but they need to be handheld. They need to be uh, uh, really, really catered to their specific needs and wants. And that usually involves many, many forms of engagement. So communication is the key factor in every relationship. And if you have a new patient that came in yesterday, left your office, and for five and a half months, there is not a peep that came out of your office to this patient that says, we know you're alive, we appreciate that you came, we appreciate you saw us, we look forward to servicing you. And that message resonating with the patient and re-delivered to that patient at least a few times over the next five and a half months, then nothing was built. If it's done in some form, shape, or manner, then you begin to see the development of that bonding between you and the new patient that just left your practice last yesterday, right, or last week. And that's a key factor. A lot of doctors say, look, I put so much effort into really making sure I have a really top-notch office and everybody delivers lots of affinity to a patient when they come and we show them that this is the best place they could be. And I tell them with all due respect, that patient leaving your practice and once again for five and a half months not hearing a peep, it's very difficult for them to have retained mm -hmm. the, the warmth that they had with you on that one time. And unless you address that with these additional touch points and contacts and high affinity uh, points, you will not get that bonding and engagement occur. Because communication, for it to work, it has to arrive. If it doesn't arrive, it will not yield to that bonding otherwise. For yeah. the other part, the bonding for the pain and uh, 
dentistry and the expense of dentistry, I usually, we recommend a wellness concept that you communicate to the patient. You're not there just to uh, treat and run away. You <laughs> want them to, you want to eliminate all their future dentistry. That is the goal of every dental practice. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that they align with what you really believe in the way to treat the patient. Yeah, that's good. I think if we relate it to more of a personal type of relationship experience that we would not go on a first date with someone and then go five and a half months and have no, <laughs> I mean, they'd have to assume you weren't that into them, right? I mean, that would have to be the conclusion. Why was there no follow up, right? So, and then it kind of comes back, I think, to your point, it could have been a great experience. You may have done everything wonderfully, but it still kind of becomes a, that was a great transactional, non-relationship-based engagement that I had there, right? Because exactly. otherwise, if it was, was relationship-based, we would talk in some way. We would have some interaction, right? That only makes sense. Absolutely. That's exactly, that's a really good word for it. It's a transactional interaction as opposed to a relationship building transaction. And uh, you want to convert that into a relationship. And the way you make that conversion is frequency of touch points and uh, making sure that at each level, it's a heartfelt touch point. So can we, can I assume that some of the best marketing strategies have a kind of a blended overlap between we're reaching new people in the community who could be patients of ours. And at the same time, we are bringing some common principles then to current new other recent new patients, ongoing patients, uh, people we haven't seen in a while that there's there's marketing strategy that runs through that whole continuum. Is that fair to say? It's it's correct for most methodologies. So you have a Google methodology methodology or a Facebook methodology where it's seeking for new patients, and then your existing client base could also interact with that message and see your name again. Um, the most obvious one would be direct mail because all of your patients are within a three to five mile radius of your practice. And when you do a direct mail, which is what my company specializes in to that three to five mile radius, you are hitting your existing customers as well as mm. uh, new faces and new eyeballs and identities. Okay. That makes sense. So from an, from a, an ongoing outreach perspective, you're you're overlapping, reaching out to new new prospects and current people, and then and then in the office, then um, how does that? How do you see marketing occurring once say they're already in? All right, so that external approach is almost accidental. It's inadvertent, but fortuitous that your existing customers are also seeing your message. Um, but I think, uh, and my company's strategy is a very focused, very high quality contact with all of your existing customers. So we feel that if you are getting 50 new patients a month, those 50 people should receive at least methodically two to three touch points over the next six months that says, we love you, we appreciate you, we thank you, happy birthday, happy holidays, and so on, in a meaningful way, in such a way that it arrives to the customer, and then invite them to come back in and offer them a, perhaps a small gift, a nominal value, to incentivize them to show up for the follow-up recall, hygiene appointments, and so forth, and keep them engaged with the office. So is that combination kind of uh, kind of at the center of a marketing then approach that you recommend? Is that is and what other elements might there be that you see as key? Uh, essentially, from a print medium, 
right? And, and again, we always look at marketing, what are the different methodologies? There's obviously Google, online, Facebook, Instagram, radio, TV, cold calls, LinkedIn. So there, there, are, there are obviously many, many different ways of creating an engagement and creating a touch point. And uh, we don't dis disconnect or we don't disregard any other ones, but we always tell a client there are two considerations. When a communication is arrived, a person immediately is going to look at this communication and say junk, which means I'm going to ignore, or is going to say, ah, interesting, and I'm going to engage, right? So you're at the mercy of that. And what we see historically as, as emails and spams and spam texts are becoming more and more prevalent, mm -hmm. we are seeing more and more consumers looking at these communications and saying, this this is marketing, this is junk, I'm going to ignore it. So we're constantly trying to evolve into finding a better form of communication. And the key note of that communication is, did it arrive or not? So if you send a thousand emails and three people, 50 people opened it or 20 people opened it and five people uh, looked at it and three people responded, that means 950 people said, this is a junk communication, I'm going to ignore it. So you only communicated to those three people or 50 people at the end of the day. So you need to supplement those uh, generic communications with a more meaningful communication or just an additional communication so that with the hope that the additional communication arrives to a different select part of your database and now you have more engagement and you have more opportunity with a call to action uh, to retrieve that consumer back into the fold. So the, the problems that, um, are really then it seems a an insufficient effort to reach out to people, but also maybe not a diverse enough or or a continuum through the through a full relationship, right? Knowing that people are in different places. So there's just not enough being covered really, it seems. Correct, but, but they don't have a choice because the problem is that when you communicate to somebody and that communication results into the receiver saying, this was a junk communication I received. Mm -hmm. If you communicate too much on the same medium, then the source is perceived as a junk source. Mm -hmm. So if you are doing recalls, and I know many offices that you know have quotas of making 50 calls a day, and only two people are responding, well, that essentially means the other 48 people said, this is a junk communication. I don't see it worthy of me responding to. Mm -hmm. So if you call the next day and then the next day and the next day and the next day, then after the fourth or fifth day, the person says, oh, so this is a junk source because they're just calling me. Obviously, they're not getting the message that I'm not interested in this method of communication and I'm just going to delete and I'm going to ignore this. Mm -hmm. right? So there is a balance that needs to be maintained where you communicate often enough so that those three or five people are at least gotten out of the thousand people or 500 people. But then in addition to that, there's also the, there are other diverse communications which allows the other pieces to also work and not any one piece is considered junk. That's good, that's good. So Viva Concepts then. So tell us a little bit about amplify a little bit more on what you were just saying by how Viva Concepts then is approaching this and providing kind of some secret weapon solutions, right? To solve some of these challenges, the junk challenge mindset, I guess, or whatever else. What, what would you tell us? It's exactly that. Uh, what my company specialized since its inception was we need to create a wow factor with our audience. We want our audience, whatever collateral ultimately ends up in their hands, their initial reaction to be, wow, I've never seen anything like this before. I'm not used to seeing this kind of quality. Therefore, whoever is behind this quality collateral is a respectable, honorable, uh, uh, and conscientious, vendor that I can trust. Mm -hmm. So every one of our products, the thread common in our products is uh, instigating or creating that wow factor. And when it's usually received in the hands, 
there is usually a few seconds or a minute or two or a retention to the collateral where it sits on a shelf for a day or two or a week or two or months or years we see with some of our products based on the redemption yeah. that the consumer held on to it for months or years and then redeemed it, which means their perception of quality allowed them to say, this is something that I need to keep and at some point in the future I will act on. And then when you look at cost of acquisition, I mean, dentistry is, is really, really expensive in terms of cost of acquisition for new consumers, even uh, re uh, retention or reactivating the old consumers, right? So when you look at the numbers of 300, 500, 700 dollars to get somebody in, to get somebody maintained, and so on and so forth, then you see that a small incremental investment in the quality of the communication you're sending is usually pay itself many, many folds uh, in terms of the acquisition expense ultimately when the new consumer comes in with our collateral. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, that's just good marketing data right there, right? So uh, so as far as the junk concept, part of the power, would you say, for Viva Concepts is quality, this uh, superior quality, is, but is, is it also tied into that, that you are in your messaging, in the appearance, and the messaging is helping to create more of a relational feel in the approach that helps transcend the junk mindset that goes, this is just a transactional pitch, but, but more, this is a relationship building strategy. Is that, would you say that? Absolutely. Absolutely. You are, you are trying to differentiate yourself from other competing dentists uh, and entities that, that are competing with you. So that differentiation, when you send somebody a really gorgeous happy birthday card or Merry Christmas card, that certainly uh, hits a different chord within the individual on a very personal level. You remember their birthday. They're getting a card you know, within a day or two before or after their birthday. Uh, that's a very meaningful message to the patient. And it's not a generic auto-generated computer email that text or text that says happy birthday, right? <laughs> it actually is a physical card. It's gorgeous. It has a very nice inspirational message in it. It has a gift in it. So it, it touches you on so many different levels that it, uh, the hope is that you get that uh, additional incremental uh, relationship building phenomena connected to it. Mm -hmm. That's great. So for those that are like in your in your mailings for prospective new patients where you don't know their birthdays or anything, you don't know anything about a special occasion, how are you also creating more of a relational feel for even in that kind of more prospecting mode? Uh, so uh, there are two ways you go after new consumers. On an internal level would be the referral concept. Right. So you're contacting an existing customer and saying, look, we love you as a customer. We want more customers like you. So we want you to introduce us to somebody else that would also benefit from our services, right? That's the overriding principle. And on that communication, the collateral will always generate a very high quality relationship type consumer, mm -hmm. right? When you do cold outflow, outbound messaging, like direct mail, going to zip codes, and so forth, then once again, you are hitting that stranger zone, and the call to action, and the messaging within this, um, you know, we have booklets, there are eight pages of information about the practice that is that gets mailed very efficiently and cost effectively to a neighborhood. Uh, and it contains a lot more information than just a simple, you know, back and forth front uh, paper postcard, which inundates people's mailboxes every single day. So once again, we create a differentiation. We create a message that has a, a very innovative uh, call to action as well as information about the practice so that it creates that engagement as opposed to here's a cheap postcard, either toss it or if you're interested, call me.
right. which there's not enough to differentiate other than where that typically goes, which is just here's what here's our kind of our loss leader uh, offer that we're making to get you to come in. But there's really not much of anything else that would set that practice apart when you see those postcards. Right. Yeah, those paper postcards, that's why it's either you toss it and uh, and if you do hold on to it, then it's also, that's a liability connected to those. And I was just at a meeting with a client that said, look, I get, I do get patients, but the quality is not high. And I said, well, yeah, when you're doing paper postcard, uh, you're not creating any kind of differentiation other than, okay, I'm looking for a deal. I'm looking for a bargain. I'm looking for an opportunity. Here it is. I'm going to just do this and then decide whether I'm going to do something later or not. But chances are you're not really looking for a relationship. You're looking for a transaction. I want my cleaning. I want my consult. I want my Invisalign uh, intro and see whether it works for me or not. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Lots of great insights. I just I just thank you for your time today. This has been great, Majid. And uh, I like what you're doing and I think it's needed. I think just the way, just the mindset of how you think and approach this, this important topic, I think is, is valuable. And my, I know that everybody who's been watching has gotten something from this. I'm, I'm certain of that. So for everybody who's been watching and says, I like this, I would like to know more. What's the best way for people to reach you? Vivaconcepts.com uh, is the easiest way. You can look us up and uh, check our website. Yeah, give me a call. 818-482-7796. Well, thank you. Appreciate your time. And I uh, look forward to further conversations with you. And um, I'm always learning as well. Uh, so thank you for... for uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's what I love about this industry. It's mutual learning at every opportunity. So I look forward to many more collaborations with you guys as well. Thank you. Thank you. So for everyone watching... Uh, this is Matthew Norton, and this is the Truth Behind Dentistry podcast with Majid Tabib of Viva Concepts, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.